Hello and welcome. I am Annette Reeder from the biblicalnutritionist.com. Today, we're going to talk about the shocking news of breast cancer. I have someone that I'm going to share with you, a dear friend, and she has walked this road and she can teach us how to help prevent cancer and how to be a survivor. This is very important because this is going to come down to our mindset and our choices. And she's going to share with you what she did. So we're going to walk with her on this journey that she went through on breast cancer, why everyone needs to hear what she has to say. We're going to talk about the steps that will help everyone watching this help to be in the prevention mode or in the survival mode. And then wait till the end because there is a new test that's out that I want every one of you to hear because I want you to know about this before you walk in and hear a diagnosis. Because if you walk into the doctor's office and you get a diagnosis, I want you to think in your mind, wait a minute, Annette just shared with me a new test that will totally change the prognosis. And this is what I want you to understand. Now, besides all of this, remember I've taught you in the other videos how you can watch your blood work. So we're going to go into that as well. So yes, today is about the shocking news of breast cancer, what to do for prevention, and how to be a survivor. So welcome with me, if you will. I have Jenny Brandt on this call, and we just met a couple months ago, and it was like friends for life. So because we have so many commonalities in our relationship and what we've done in our life and who we um, who we seek out for leadership, mentorship. It's just, it's fun when you find that person. It's like, oh, well, yeah, I know who you are because I can just tell we're going to be friends forever. So welcome with me, Jenny. Jenny has been, she has a new book out called Unleash Your God-Given Healing, Eight Steps to Prevent and Survive Cancer. Welcome, Jenny. Thanks. It's great to be here. And it's great to be with you again after being in St. Louis together. I know. That was so much fun. I just, it was amazing. We had never met until a couple months ago. <laughs> and we're two peas in a pod. <laughs> we are. Exactly. Uh, very many same friends, same stories. You know, it's been a lot of fun getting to know you. Well, Jenny, what was it like? Your mom had just passed away from breast cancer. And next thing you know, within a few months you get that diagnosis. Walk us through a little bit about that so people can really relate to the road that you've traveled. Well, I was still grieving my mother's death. I had just done the Cooper River Bridge 10 kilometer run, which means I walked it briskly. I didn't run it <laughs> at that age. And I was known as a health nut. And in the middle of that night, my ring got tangled in my nightie. And when I was trying to free it, I felt the lump. Now that was a shock, but I wasn't too concerned because I had had fluid filled cysts before and I just figured it was that. But I went immediately to the doctor and the first shock was when they said it is cancer. It was just too hard to believe. Then the next week, more tests came back and they said the words nobody wants to hear. It's aggressive. And then about 10 days later, after the MRI, I met with the surgeon and he looked me straight in the eye and said, Jenny, it's worse than we thought. He said, it appears to be planted other tumors in your breast. It appears to be in your lymph nodes and other parts of your body. And I looked at him and I said, I don't believe you. Show me that MRI. So he flashed it up on a screen, a life size screen. And I'm looking for anything to indicate that that's me because it looks like a tornado has invaded my body. That's the only description I can give. But that caused me to get a second opinion. And I recommend that anyone who gets any serious cancer or other disease diagnosis get that second opinion at the best place that specializes in what you have. Research what that is go there, that second opinion turned out to be very valuable for me. Okay, so what was different about the second opinion? How was, 
that important to your to your journey? Well, the place I went to had two radiologists and two surgeons, very much experienced, to look at the MRI. And they said, we do confirm she does have aggressive breast cancer. We do confirm it's planted other tumors. We could, they confirmed a lot of it. But then they said, we don't know that it's all over your body. What we're seeing on this MRI appears to be severe inflammation from a biopsy that went bad. And he said, it's one of the worst we have ever seen. Mm. My breast was doubled in size. It was totally bruised. Uh, it was the most painful thing I've ever been through. They had to do another biopsy and I barely felt a pinch. So, you know, that was the first good news I had heard. It might not be all over your body, but yes, it was aggressive breast cancer. And yes, my life was in danger and I had to take action and get prepared for a difficult journey. Now, I have to be honest with you. Um, I rode that roller coaster ride of fear and worry for a few weeks. It was very difficult. And then I was reading in Philippians where Paul is telling it, you know, his, his followers, basically, when you're in the middle of a trial and he was in prison, pray about everything. Give thanks in everything. And then he said, look on the good things. We all know the verses. And when I started doing that, I learned from my research that I was actually helping my body to heal. I was lifting my immune system and enhancing it. And all that fear and worry was doing was suppressing it. Not that I was perfect and not that cancer is not a fear journey, but you cannot ride the roller coaster of fear. I agree with you so much. We've talked on this on this channel here so many times about how our thoughts, they totally affect our cells. They affect how our cells remove waste. They affect how our cells take in nutrition. Just saying the words, God loves me, opens your cells to be able to live. Your cells know the maker, <laughs> you know, uh, the cells know the maker's name. So when we speak it, they respond and, but it works in reverse as well. If we speak evil, if we speak, you know, always in condemnation, our cells, they have a hard time being in that thriving mode. So I totally agree with what you're saying. And there's all the negative emotions, anger included. A lot of people get angry when they get a diagnosis, anger can lower your number of lymphocyte cells, which is part yeah. of your immune system. So to harbor anger probably does the most damage to your immune system. And when you're in a cancer journey, you need to do everything you can to uplift your immune system and to help it to heal and work as God intended. And my whole book is about using these eight steps to get your immune system working as God intended so you can prevent cancer but also so you can get through the journey and prevent it from coming back if you've already had cancer. I, I agree with you 100%. So let's talk about during your journey of going through the cancer, the treatments. What would be one, two, three takeaways that you could share with those watching? Well, I would say the first is it's important, and I tell all the people I mentor through the cancer process, hydrate properly. As a matter of fact, increase hydration because hydration enhances every cell, every tissue, every organ, and every system in your body. And you need all those systems working properly during the cancer journey. You even add to that increased hydration because you want to lessen the side effects of the chemo, yet make sure that it gets to every cell. So hydration is key. You're also a lot of these um, chemotherapy med medicines and pills that you take by mouth, one of the side effects is blood clots. So again, you want to increase hydration, but number two, you also want to increase movement because movement stimulates your lymphatic system to take out the trash. And during chemotherapy, that's a lot of trash when it does its job and it's, it's poison. And so you want it to go in, do its job, and then you want it to leave your body and not recirculate. So I made it a practice to walk two miles before every chemo. I had an eight-hour chemo regimen, and then two miles afterwards. Here's the funny thing. I wasn't doing it because I understood all this at the time. I did it to relieve stress. 
And then after I finish chemo and I finish with flying colors with minimal side effects, one of my doctors says, did you see the new research in Australia? And she pointed me to it. And sure enough, 30 entities in Australia came together to say that exercise is the best thing a cancer patient can do to get through the treatments, all of the treatments, but specifically chemotherapy. It actually enhances the chemotherapy and helps to remove all that trash afterwards. Then MD Anderson comes up with a study with mice showing that the mice who were on a moderate exercise routine, they weren't running marathons and overdoing it. That wouldn't be a good idea. And you do what you can when you can, but these mice did better with the chemotherapy, the side effects and the chemotherapy worked better. So even though I didn't realize what I was doing, I was praying God would guide me and he was, he was guiding us through this journey. And that was probably one of the most significant things that I did. I actually walked two miles after my first surgery that reduced my risk of blood clots, pumped the anesthesia out, promoted healing in my body. My doctors were like, we don't have people do this after surgery. You had a hundred stitches. It felt good to move. And I tell people after surgery, you do what you can when you can. If you have the energy and the balance, walk on that hospital floor. You might need a little bit of help from a spouse or a parent, but movement is going to be what gets you going again and all those organ systems working properly. And it is key to cancer survival. Yeah, that's real important. Just because of the osmotic pressure, when a cell is dehydrated, it is more susceptible to the negative thinking and also to the chemo, the, the chemo chemicals that are going through the body. So we want to protect the healthy cells so that the tumor can be getting the highest dose and the healthy cells are getting the weaker dose. So that's so important. But I also want to point out too, that there is a seven year process of getting rid of all of the residual trash from chemotherapy. So remembering that not just during the treatment itself to do this, but to continue for a full seven years to, re to so that your body can totally remove all trash, which also the more we get rid of the trash, the more we lessen the toxic load, which also lessens the reoccurrence of tumors. So and that is so important. And I did something in addition to that. These are lifestyle changes I made permanent. But in addition to that, I bought an infrared sauna. And that sauna helped me instead of seven years to get those chemicals out sooner by sweating. Yeah, that was smart. So was yeah, really there smart. are definitely things you can do. And I tell my cancer patients after the chemo that, you know, join a sauna club, make sure you are sweating on a regular basis. And that infrared sauna is deeper and it is one of the best ways, but make sure you do that because you, your body has been doused with a bunch of poisons and the more longer they hang around, the uh, harder it is for your immune system to function as God intended. So exactly. we want to get things back to the way they should be and God wants them to be. Well, the way he created our body to be able to handle any type of toxic you know, chemical or toxic thought is always through his principles. So, yes. Amazing. And, you know, one thing I learned, Annette, during the journey is that I didn't know this before, that God created our bodies to heal on an everyday basis. If only we will do the right things so that our immune system will work as he intended. It is God's gift to us, this amazing immune system he has given us. And it's working as you and I are talking. You know, it's working on our behalf, but when we sleep at night, it only gets more powerful. There's just so much power in deep sleep where that melatonin goes off and melatonin is a major immune builder and a cancer fighter, but we must engage in deep sleep on a regular basis in order for that to happen. Yeah, so true. So true. All right, you covered hydration. If you would to cover two more of the eight steps that are in your book, we don't want to give all eight away because they can just get the book and find all eight. What are two more steps that you took besides the hydration? Of course, you said exercise, which is also one of the steps. Right. And What's then deep sleep, I just hit on. Okay. So deep sleep is, is, is critical in the cancer journey. I would have to say using food as medicine, and I know this is definitely your area of strength, 
But it's just amazing when I realized that God said to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, I have given you these plants. And then today, scientists can tell you all the plants he was talking about, which would be fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, herbs, and spices. All of these plants contain cancer-fighting power, and they contain antioxidants and phytochemicals that work on our behalf every single day and fiber. So all these things together are important. And I could just sum it up in just a few words. I would say to people, this is what I learned about eating, eat more plants. The typical American diet is meat three times a day. We eat the processed food. All these things open the door for cancer and other diseases. When we eat, as he told Adam and Eve, if we eat more plants later on, we can have some meat if we do it correctly, but meat three times a day is hard to digest. So I learned during the cancer journey, and I describe it in the book, everything I learned about nutrition and how important it is. But if we use that food as medicine, you know, I'm back on a road of health again with my immune system just, you know, booming. And what's interesting is just, let me just take one, one fruit, a low carb fruit, blueberries, which I now eat every single day. They help fight cancer. They help prevent heart disease. They build your immune system. They're good for your kidneys and your lungs. I mean, they strengthen the endothelial lining of your blood vessels, which increases your longevity. And it, prevents dementia and Alzheimer's, which my father died from. So my husband and I now make a practice of eating a cup of blueberries every day and we get it in our smoothie. Yeah, I love that. So definitely. And so that's the fruit. And then I noticed in your book, you hit on one of the topics that we have covered many times on these video series, and that's cruciferous. So, so I did a video on the angiogenesis effect of eating cruciferous. Cruciferous actually goes in and inhibits the tumor from creating the vessel to the bloodstream to get that lifeline. And so it inhibits the growth of tumors, the malignancy of tumors, and that's very effective. And yet you pointed out in your book, it's also important for estrogen fed tumors as well. Yes, it is. And I get one to two servings of cruciferous vegetables every day now. And again, it's in my smoothie. And blueberries does the same thing. Dr. William Lee, who graduated from Harvard Medical School, found in his research that blueberries also cuts off the blood supply to cancer tumors. So one of my recommendations to people taking, let's say they have colon cancer, stage four, and they're taking Avastin that Dr. Lee's uh, mentor at Harvard in, invented. It cuts, it's a drug that cuts off the blood supply to cancer tumors. And what I say is add the blueberries too. You right. know, let's go at it naturally plus the drug. And I mean, as preventatively, it's a great way to prevent cancer from happening in the first place. So that and flax seeds are very, they lower the aggressive estrogens in your body and this estrogen dominance is what's driving so many breast cancers today, not only in women, 80% are estrogen fed, but in men who get breast cancer, 90% are estrogen fed. So that lets you know that estrogen is not just coming from within the body of a man because he wasn't made to have that much estrogen, produce that right. much estrogen. So it's important that we look at these things carefully and pull back the curtain on what's causing one in eight women to get breast cancer today. And I would love to see those numbers go down. You know, that's why I'm on a mission. I don't want anybody to go through what I had to go through and make the decisions I had to make and sit in that chair waiting for that nurse to bring you suited up in a hazmat suit to bring you those toxic chemicals to put in your body. That was certainly not a highlight of my life and I would like to prevent other people from having to be in that chair. I, I so agree with you too. That is exactly why I do what I do. And what everything that's in your book is what I've been teaching for many years. And yet I, I do regret that many people wait for a diagnosis before they'll make a change. 
And, and it was true in our life too. My husband was dealing with some health issues. We've already had cancer in our household. And you um, it's almost like we have to be slapped in the face with a wake-up call. It's like, you know, what you're doing is not working, you know? And then we go back into God's word. We ask him for the truth. And, and then we realize, this is how I realized, Oh, yeah, that's kind of been there all along. <laughs> you know, I just chose to follow man's lab experiments, which is what I call man's altered food. And therefore, we ended up in the medical process where now I teach people, hey, let's go to God's word first, see what he's created for us to eat, eat it in its closest way that he created it, just following the three principles that we teach. And we can help prevent a lot of these diagnoses from being a scare later on down the road. So yes, totally. It's so true. And I'm like you, we had to get hit with cancer after cancer, Alzheimer's with my dad to make me dive deeper and be willing to change. But I see young couples today in my church who are lapping up what I'm saying in my book, and they are willing to change because they're seeing the one in two cancer rates today. For for their children born today, that's their risk and only going up. They're seeing all the autoimmune disorders and they're starting to say, okay, Miss Jenny, as they call me, what can we do to prevent this from happening? So my hat goes off to them that they're doing what I advocate, and that is, Cancer and all these diseases are rising in our country. The rates are too high. We've got to be smart and put a plan of prevention in place. And that is the best way to not end up in that chair or with some kind of autoimmune disease. I so agree. And autoimmune diseases are escalating. We have over 100 different autoimmune diseases and they're happening younger and younger. And there's rarely a family in our church that isn't dealing with some type of issue with their child, some type of health issue, um, food sensitivity issue, some skin issue. It's already happening in in a different area. You know, it's already showing up and showing different faces. And most of it comes down to what we're feeding our family. And there's other elements. We talked about our thoughts. We talked about fear. We talk about our beliefs that feeds it as well. That either feeds your healing or it feeds the disease and we get to choose. And it's why he says you choose a blessing or a cursing by what you believe, by what you agree with. Do you agree with how God describes you or do you agree with how the world defines you? So Totally. All right. Now let's step into the last part of this, which is something that I was not aware of until I met you. What I have been teaching people for years is to get specific blood work done. Many times you'll have to pay out of pocket to get this blood work done, but they're cancer markers. One of them is your CEA level. That's a common test that doctors will, uh, not rarely, but randomly do. Your vitamin D level is very important. And you mentioned that in your book, but also some of the CA levels. Now I have all of this written out on our website, thebiblicalnutritionist.com. You can download it, take it to your doctor and say, I want all of this ordered. Now, many times the doctor will say, we don't do those CA levels until someone is in treatment to see if the chemo is working. To me, I find that the most flabbergasting statement you can ever make because it's like, no, I want to know what my numbers are today. So the reason I got on this bandwagon is because back in 2010, I had surgery on my lung and they used a chemical that is a known carcinogen. I mean, we, the doctor and I, we battled (laughs) several days trying to, I kept saying, no, that's a carcinogen. He's like, no, this is the only way we can get you out of the hospital. I basically gave in. I'm like, Lord, I am yours to be used, you know, for your mission. I'm trusting you. So since I know that's a known carcinogen, that's when I started watching my CA levels for ovarian cancer, because that's what it causes. So by tracking that every six months, every year, I can see if my numbers start to climb. I can also watch by changing my diet or maybe not changing, getting like if I slipped in a few areas and got a little lazy with, you know, some foods that aren't healthy, i brought that back straight back into God's foods. And then knowing what supplements to take, I could then test again in three to four months and it would be right back where I wanted it. So these cancer screening levels are very important because you can see when numbers are starting to go up, you need to adjust. And typically you're going to know, oh yeah, you know, all that sugar I've been eating is showing up. And so, you know, to bring it back down. So besides watching the blood work, which is on my website, go print that off. 
Tell us about this other test and what it is and how it can help. All right, genomic testing came out after I was diagnosed with cancer and had completed chemotherapy. But this is for people. This is not prevention <clears throat> as far as you know, getting right. cancer. This is once you've been diagnosed and you need chemotherapy. Genomic testing is now available through your hospital system. And what they do is they take your cancer cells, put them in a Petri dish, or they take blood work. Different hospitals do different ways now, but they, it helps you to determine which adjuvants, which chemical adjuvants, and which natural things can be used on your cancer and which ones work the best. Now, they've been using this for people who have three rounds of chemo, maybe stage three or stage four, and then they will order this if the chemo, sometimes the chemo either does nothing, it makes your cancer worse, or it backs it up. Of course, we all want it to back it up. If they see that the chemotherapy is not backing up the cancer and it's nothing or it's making it worse, then your doctor will order this genomic testing because that's when insurance companies pay for it. But what I say to cancer patients that I mentor is pay for that test up first. It is not inexpensive. It can cost five to $8,000. It's the best assurance you can have because this is what you don't want to have happen in the cancer journey. You take chemotherapy and it does nothing. So you poison your body for nothing or it makes your cancer worse. And you won't know that till the third or fourth round after you've gotten a good amount of chemo. So what I say is tell your doctor, I want genomic testing upfront. Tell me what it will cost. I realize insurance will not pay for it, but I want to do this because I want to make sure I'm using the best chemicals on my body. Everybody's body is unique, created by God. There were friends of mine and people I knew that were going through the ca same cancer as me in different parts of the country. One of them died from the first dose of what was given to me. Some of them could not handle it. And some of them got into real trouble with the chemicals. I did not have too much trouble with the chemicals. The real point is, did it kill your cancer cells? To know upfront that you have a better chance by doing this test to me is well worth not waiting for that first scan after three to four rounds of chemo. The body can only take so much poison. Once you've been through three or four rounds, your immune system is struggling, your white blood cells are, are plummeting, your red blood cells are usually plummeting depending on the chemicals used. And now you've got to go through new chemicals. So I don't advocate getting caught in that position. I think it would be wise for the insurance companies and save them more money if I could just get to the insurance companies if they would pay for this test up front. I think it would be well worth it for them because chemo can be a half million dollars in a patient like me that had to have it on a, for a whole year with immunotherapy. So I was a very expensive chemotherapy patient. And if it hadn't worked and then they had to go to new chemicals, look at what that cost the insurance company. Right. And a lot of people are still paying out of pocket. So insurance covers a percentage. And then depending on what insurance policies they have, they, there are many families that go bankrupt yes. over cancer diagnosis, and especially if it's a child. Uh, so if, even with a child, this test can be done. It doesn't matter the age of the person, this test can be done. And you know, if you have to demand it yourself, if you have to pay for it yourself, uh, I have not looked into ordering it yourself. There's a lot of lab work and a lot of tests we cannot order on our own. I, if someone has, you know, this situation, they might want to look into that without even going through the doctor. I don't know if that's available or not. A lot of the other blood work that I recommend, you can order on your own. You don't need a doctor to order it. And so that's good, valuable information to know where you can get that if your doctor will not order it. And I do advocate getting your vitamin D levels checked and most doctors will order that for you. Three doctors told me had I had higher vitamin D levels, I might not have gotten cancer in the first place. Now, right. That doesn't wake you up. And of course, during time of COVID, vitamin D is also important for flus and viruses. So I recommend everyone get that vitamin D 
test. And if your doctor won't order it, there are labs that will do that for you. Exactly. Yes. And also be very careful about ordering it for your children. I would only order for your children out of pocket at the lab yourself. Um, because when you do that, it, your, your scores do not go into the system. And with children, you don't want their blood work scores going into the system. And that's another conversation. So yes. Now, when we did our interview with the Treasures of Healthy Living Bible Study, we have a whole full DVD series. And the Bible study itself would be great for the women in your church to go through. It walks through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, all of the verses about food and how God designed us. It's an amazing book with Dr. Cooey. Um, great, great teaching. So it's a great Bible study to do as a group. Yet in the videos, we talk about vitamin D and it has to be people with cancer do not have a vitamin D level of 70. They have low vitamin D levels and the average vitamin D for most people is in the twenties. And that's what I was when diagnosed. Yes. And that makes you very susceptible to a lot of health problems. Yeah. So getting your vitamin D level checked every quarter, order it yourself. It's usually like 25 bucks. Order it yourself, track it yourself, keep increasing your dosages. Um, personally, I take 10,000 IU a day and I, because I want to stay in the 70 to 90 range. And the doctor that I work with, he's the same way. He has to take 10,000. But I've tested so often to know how much I need to stay in that range. Many people, they say, oh, well, it's in my multivitamin or it's in my shake that I take. And they're like, oh, well, I'm getting 1,000, 2,000. I'm like, well, that may be good enough, but only if you've tested your blood work to know if it's good enough. It's usually not good enough. It takes me 5,000. So, you know, it usually 1,000 for every 25 pounds of body weight, I've heard several doctors say. But until you take the test, you don't know for sure. Right. And the blood work doesn't lie. It tells you exactly where you are. And as just a, an average person, anyone can change their diet and their supplements without a doctor prescription. We can control this on our own without needing to go in and pay for a doctor visit. That's the other part that I love about it. We can actually control this and we can take ownership of it. The other thing is eliminating sugar in your diet. Uh, a lot of people just are like, oh, I, I'm not willing to give up my sugar. I'm like, but did you just hear Jenny talk about the hazmat suit? Seriously. You know, but everyone thinks it won't happen to them. Uh, so exactly right. And, and with the statistics today, one in two, you've got to wake up and say, yes, it could very easily happen to me, especially as I get older. So, yeah, the sugar, you know, I'm not as enticed by the sugar. I've always loved it. But after what I went through and the hazmat suit and everything, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no, no, thanks. I don't have to have that all the time anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it totally feeds tumors very quickly. Tumors just love it. You know, it's just like a puppy going after a treat is what a tumor is going after sugar. So very much so. All right. This has been a very insightful conversation. And I think what you and I are trying to say is don't wait for a diagnosis. Take charge of your health now. Recognize God created you in his image to be a temple for him to dwell and he's given us very good guidelines in scripture. We call it the three principles of eating. And so it's, we also talked about, it's not just what you eat. It's what you believe. It's what you're thinking. It's what you're allowing to uh, meditate on. And today we live in a culture that's feeding us 100% fear. And we get to choose if we want to settle for that fear or we want to step into God's word. Like you shared the fear and the anger of chemo. Now people are dealing with the fear and the anger of what's happening around us. But yet, same situation, we can all jump into the book of Philippians and decide how we want to handle what's going on around us. Because the fear that's being fed in all countries around the world is going to escalate cancers and autoimmune diseases because our mind controls our health. And when we get that understood, we will be deep diving into God's word, meditating on those scriptures and letting them speak to every cell in our body. Amen. I heard Dr. Michael Murray recently say that um, the number two comorbidity behind obesity for COVID is fear. Yeah, it is. Depression rates are up. Cancer rates are up. And, and yeah, it's just such a, um, it, it just feeds it, you know, and fear closes down your defense system in your body. 
So we have to recognize when it says to fear the Lord, it's not a scary fear. It's an awe. It's a, it's a sense of awe. I'm in awe of what God can do. I'm in awe of what it, he is doing and recognize he's still in control. For sure. Yeah. Please let your audience know that I do have a cancer wellness and prevention blog that I post on weekly as new information, you know, comes up. And things that I couldn't cover in the book because maybe I didn't know it or I couldn't go into that much detail. And that's found at www.jenny, G-I-N-N-Y, Brant, B as in boy, R-A-N-T dot com. All right. And you also worked with Dr. Elliot and he gave different protocols on how to get chemo, like how to reduce the dose for better results. And so do you cover that in your blog? Um, I actually talk about it in the book. He actually says something about it in my book when he's making commentary in one of my chapters. He actually was one of the first doctors. I don't know when he started, but he finally told me, he said he was losing as many patients to cancer as he was to the chemotherapy itself. And so I am a great believer in low dose chemo. It is not going to be all over America. A lot of people are going out of country to get it. But what they do is they use this idea that, you know, cancer cells love and crave sugar, which was proven by a Nobel Peace Prize winner, what they crave and how they react to oxygen, all these things. And he lowered the dose of chemo by lowering their blood sugar, therefore weakening the cancer cell. And then it didn't take as much chemo to kill the cancer. But when a doctor uses that low dose chemo, you don't lose your hair. You don't kill off your immune system to kill the cancer. But when they do that and put it in conjunction with genomic testing before the chemo is given and find the best chemical adjuvants, natural and unnatural, to fight your cancer, you've got a much better prognosis. So I believe the future of cancer therapy, I don't know if it'll ever happen widespread here because of big pharma and all the profits they make off of chemotherapy. But if we can do genomic testing for those that need chemotherapy and then do the low dose chemo, wow, that would, that would be a big help to cancer patients. I would love to see that. But most people I know that are getting it are going to people like Dr. Elliot um, a few places around the, our country do it. And sometimes because insurance won't pay for it, they're having to pay out of pocket for it. But at one fifth to one tenth the dose, it doesn't cost the half million that it right. cost for someone like me. So if I could do it over again, I would prefer, strongly prefer and want the low dose chemo. I, I agree with you 100%. And once someone is diagnosed with cancer, their death certificate will say died of this cancer. It will not say died of this chemo, died of this therapy. It will always say died of a cancer. Uh, and so that's the sad part because over half of the deaths of people who have cancer are from the treatment more so than- the It wouldn't surprise me, but I've not seen the research on that. And I've always been curious as to how many people are dying from the cancer how many people are dying from the chemo and the radiation and the, and the treatments? So yeah. that's, you know, uh, I would love to look more into that because, you know, people need to know that when they're making decisions about the cancer journey. And I think of just hearing yesterday that Governor Ron DeSantis in Florida, his wife has been diagnosed with breast cancer and they have three young children and she's very young. But again, like all these other diseases, it's happening more and more to younger people every day. And I do believe it's highly related to the toxins in our environment, especially xenoestrogens yes. that are coming in through our water, our skin, our food, and the air in our house because we're using cleaning products and personal care products that have chemicals in them. So, oh, yes. you know, we've got to take a good look at what we're doing in America. I agree. I agree. And that's what I've been teaching since 2007. <laughs> so, all right. All right. Well, Jenny, we could, we know the two of us could continue this conversation for quite a long time. <laughs> all night long. <laughs> we could, we could, we've proven that. But I just want to say thank you. You've touched on some really good topics. You've given some good takeaways for everyone who's listening 
to have steps that they can do for prevention and for survival because it works the same. And also always recognizing it is always with praise and thanksgiving. We are, we are, we are speaking to our Lord because he is the one who controls it. And so recognizing he's in control. We do not need to live in fear. We have options on how we want to feed our body and care for our body. He gave us those as options. We are not under manna and quail. So right now, so we actually have lots of options and we get to choose. We get to choose whether we want to have a healthy body or whether we want to live with the side effects of eating what I call lab experiments. So anyway, it has been a joy to, uh, to share this with you today. I'm, I'm so excited. I can't wait to read the comments that everyone leaves from this because I know there's amazing takeaways in this call. Anything else, Jenny, before we go? They can also reach me on my website. I have a contact that will, you know, I do answer emails if people have questions. So I'd love to, you know, help people in any way I can. It's my mission now. And I think, you know, people get so much of a better prognosis when they know more and can make better decisions going through preventing this, getting through it and preventing it from coming back. And just having someone to go to and realizing they're not alone. And a lot of times our family members are not our best go-tos because they are in as much fear as the person who's been diagnosed. So knowing you can step outside of your family and find a circle of friends who can say, hey, let me walk you through this. Let me share with you what I know and let me hold your hand and you're going to be all right. Very true. Very true. All right. Thank you so much, Jenny Brandt, for joining us here today. And for all of you watching, I know that this is going to touch a lot of hearts. We are here at thebiblicalnutritionist.com, always here to serve you God's recipe for excellent health, which always includes the number one ingredient, which is God loves you. He's loved you from the moment of conception. He's loved you the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his love is everlasting. And he is always there waiting for us. And always remember that his love is there for you. There's nothing we have to do to earn it. We just have to receive it. And that's the beauty of his love. So thank you for watching. Remember, God loves you. We love you too. And we are here to help you enjoy the life and to be on mission as strong as possible until this race is done. So thank you very much.